Hi friends, we are back for part two of our portrait drawing lesson. Last time we created our face and the facial features and today we're going to be adding details like hair, uh, accessories, a neck and shoulders and some clothes and then we'll finish them up. Now if you haven't already, please take a look at some of the feedback that I left on your portraits that you submitted last time. I made some notes and I did a little digital drawing on the photos that you submitted to help you make a few improvements. So if you haven't done that yet, take a peek, read some of the improvements and see if you can make some changes. That way your portrait is ready for part two. All right, friends, so speaking of some of the feedback that I left, here is a little poster of my portrait, No Nose. I posted this on our Canvas page as well. These are some things that you should no longer be doing when you draw portraits now that we have gone through this unit and you are getting to almost um, fourth and fifth grade and beyond. So things like drawing the shape of a head as a circle, having the eyes all the way up at the top of the face in the forehead, drawing an L-shaped nose. We showed, I showed you last art class how to draw a more realistic nose. Today we're gonna to be talking about adding hair and the, the body. So when we add a neck and shoulders, our neck is actually pretty thick and our shoulders don't come up in these little hills that sometimes we do in elementary school. So we're gonna work on that. We're also gonna work on drawing hair. So drawing little stick hair or fountain hair that um, kind of comes from the top of your head in lines is not gonna be the most realistic way to do that. Same with semicircle hair, where you just kind of color a straight line across the forehead. So I'm gonna to talk to you about all of these things, and hopefully we will move past some of these portrait no-nos in the future. All right, so you will need your portrait from last time, so if you have not gotten that already, please take it out now. If you can't find it or got rid of it, I would encourage you to go back to part one and draw a new portrait so that you can continue with part two. Um, you will need to have something turned in this week. So if you didn't keep your portrait from last time, you're gonna to need to draw a new one. Now, for those of you who are ready, let's get started. So let's start adding the rest of the body so we don't have just this magical floating head in the middle of our paper. So when we're drawing our neck, our neck is actually pretty wide. It's only a little bit smaller than your head. And so we're gonna make a small straight line that goes down and a matching one over here. So we're gonna make sure that we have a lot of space between the two lines. So your whole chin should be inside of your um, inside of your neck. And then our shoulders, we're gonna do a gentle curve on either side, make it look a little bit like an upside down candy cane or a letter J. And we're gonna create a horizontal line that goes across. And I'm just doing little sketchy short pencil lines to sort of build my shape. We're gonna curve down to the bottom of the paper. Now let's do the same on the other side. Remember, we are not looking for hill shoulders, so shoulders should not come up in a curve like a rainbow. We should use a horizontal line, and it might surprise you to know that your shoulders are actually very wide. And there are, of course, exceptions to the human body. Not everybody is built exactly the same, but for the most part, your shoulders should be about as wide as three necks. Now that doesn't mean that you have three necks, it just means that the width is about equal to that. So if I take my fingers and measure the neck, I should come over here and have about the same size for each side of my shoulders. So you can check that with your hands too. So my, my shoulders maybe are a little short, but that's okay. So we'll come out to here and it's just an approximate. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but shoulders shouldn't be skinny in like this. They need to be nice and wide so they can support your neck and head. Okay, so let's add a little bit of a line here just to indicate where your arms will start. And then let's add um, some clothes. So if this is a self-portrait, it's a portrait of you, you can draw um, an outfit that you wear. Um, for now, I'm just gonna draw a collar line and then I'll add details later because I'm gonna be adding hair and I'm not sure if my hair is gonna cover over some of my shirt. So I'm gonna wait to put details on my shirt. Okay, so last art class, we pretty much finished up our facial features. And so I think I made a few notes on some of your portraits that you can go ahead and erase your guidelines now. We don't need them anymore. And if you remember, we drew them really lightly so that erasing them is no problem at all. All right, guys, so let's talk about hair now. I have linked a packet of hair styles and different kinds of hair textures 
on our Canvas page. So you might wanna go ahead and download that and take a peek through this packet. This will give you a lot of different ideas for a variety of hairstyles. Hair is one of those things that makes each of us unique. No one has the same exact hair as anyone else. And so I've tried to provide with this packet a bunch of different options. If you can't find one that looks exactly like your hair, that's okay. You can maybe use one as a start. So the first thing we need to talk about is a hair line. So in elementary school, a lot of times we start our hair at the very tippy top of our head and just build our hair around the face. But your hairline actually comes down a little ways into your forehead. And so what we're gonna do is each start with a hairline. Now this line is gonna be a guideline for most of you because you're probably gonna need to erase. Some hairstyles cover this hairline, but it's a good place to start. So we're gonna start by making just a really gentle line here just a little horizontal that's going to be a guide for us and we're going to take our pencils and curve down to the ear so a gentle curve that goes down to the ear we're going to do the same thing on the other side and i'm just using my little sketchy lines again curve down and towards the ear so again, this is our guideline, our hairline. Our hair will get built off of this. Um, we don't necessarily need to keep this line because not everybody has a, a hairline that looks exactly like that. So when you have found in the packet a hairstyle that is close to yours, I'm gonna look, let's see. So for me personally, I'm gonna borrow this hairstyle here as mine for my self portrait. Now again, yours may not look anything like Mrs. A's, that's okay. And one of the biggest tips that I can give you about drawing hair when we're trying to make it look a little more realistic is don't try to draw every single hair. We're gonna draw the outline of your hair and add a few lines for texture. So you'll notice that this hairstyle right here only has a few lines just to indicate some of the waves and the texture of the hair. It does not have every single individual line drawn here. Please remember that you can pause the video at any time or go back and listen again. I know that this portrait unit is a lot of information, so please take your time and feel free to pause whenever you need a break. So the first thing I've done here is draw a little bit of a part. Some of your hair might be parted, some might not be able to see that, that's okay. Um, and I'm actually gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna have one side be pulled behind the ear and one side over because you might need to erase one of your ears or part of the, uh, part of the head. So I'm gonna have my hair curve down and this hair is gonna go in front of my ear. So it's gonna curve, it's a little bit wavy. It's gonna go down over the shoulder. So that's one side. Now we're gonna do this outline over here. So we'll start at the part, we'll come a little bit over the hairline, we'll add a little bit of a wave and then down and I'll stop that at the shoulder if I want a little piece that goes in front of my shoulder, I'll just connect there. And now I'll do the other side, but this side I'm gonna have tucked behind my ear. So I'm gonna just bring a wavy line down behind the ear, create the outline on the outside of the hair, do a little wave and down behind my shoulders. Okay, so now there's a lot of things I need to erase here. Since this hair covers my ear, the hairline, and I wouldn't be able to see this part of my head underneath the hair, I'm gonna erase all of this. Now again, this might not apply to all of you. If you have short hair, you will probably be able to see the ears. All right, so as I said before, you don't need to add a lot of lines to build your hair. You can just add a few lines for texture. So I'm just gonna do a few little sketchy lines that come down just to show the wave and show that there's some texture there, but I don't wanna overdo it. And we're gonna keep these portraits in pencil so you don't have to worry about coloring them in. All right, now I'm gonna show you two other styles of hair. If you are comfortable moving on and deciding your hair on your own, you can feel free to skip ahead. I'm gonna do a short hair tutorial and an updo with um, curly hair and braids. So if you'd like to see either of those, please keep watching. Otherwise, you can move on, create your hair, start adding accessories, clothes, and then at the very end, I will show you how to make glasses. 
So I will just do this right here. And of course, you can always change the type of lines that you use to fill it in. If you have curly hair or um, straight hair, you can do different lines to show that texture. So again, the first thing we need to start with is making a hairline. So near the top of the head, but down a little bit, we're gonna make a line and then a curve down to the ear and another curve down to the ear. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start building this hair. So this hair has a part. Now, not everyone's short hair will have a part, but that's okay. All right, and so what's different about this is that we are gonna use this hairline as the base of our hairstyle. The one we just looked at, that hairline needed to be erased because the hair covered it. This one, it won't be the case. So we're gonna use a lot of texture lines to show the direction the hair is flowing um, and how short it is. So we're gonna use sort of short, wispy lines like this to show that the hair is coming off the face. And we don't need to do too many, but we just wanna show that we have short hair here. And again, I'm changing the direction of my pencil so that I can show the direction of the hair. And then at the top, we're once again gonna just do the outline of the hair. So we'll use a slightly jagged, almost zigzag lines, but not so harsh, to just show the outside texture of the hair. And so it'll come down to the ear and then stop. And we'll do the same on this side, where we have those jagged texture zigzags down to the hair and stop. Okay, now I'll need to erase this headline that I drew so that all you can see is the hair. We can add a little more detail if you'd like. A couple more of these short lines just to show some texture. Okay, and again, we don't need to fill it in all the way, but just to indicate the length and direction of the hair. All right, let's do one more hairstyle before um, we show you how to do glasses. I'm going to show you how to do a pulled up hairstyle um, in sort of a ponytail, and we'll do a different kind of textured hair. So we're gonna get, again, start with our little horizontal line to show the hairline. We're gonna come down and curve behind the ear and again, come down and curve behind the other ear. So a nice gentle curve. And next, we're going to create, we're just gonna in, create another headline that's slightly above the one we started with, just to show a little bit of volume from the hair and that'll come down behind the ears. And so for this hairstyle, I'm gonna actually use this one up here as um, an example, because it's got a lot of different um, techniques and textures. And so, We'll start by creating the ponytail part. So if your hair is pulled up into a ponytail, we'll need to draw what just looks like a really skinny little oval. And that'll be our hair tie near the top of our head. And then to create a wavy or curly texture, we'll use wavy lines above the head, leaving some space. And again, we're just outlining. We'll do our wave, have it come down. Maybe we'll have it come down below the ears and then connect back under. And then we'll take another wavy line. We'll come down and connect under the ears. All right, so again, we just use a few lines to show texture and show the direction of the hair. We don't need to draw every individual hair. So we just have a few lines here showing the hair sort of rising out of the ponytail and curving over. Now to create the braids that are um, pulled back to the ponytail, I do have in this packet um, a how to draw braids. Um, and so there's different ways to do that. There's simple ways with just like X's or little V's, and there's a little slightly more complicated ways. So whichever way you'd like to try is up to you. And so just to create those lines for each of the braids, we'll do some curved vertical lines and we'll just have them fill in this space between the hairline and the top of the head. All right, and then depending on how you want to create your um, the lines to show the texture of the braids, you could just use X's to keep it simple. You could do letter V's just to show some of that texture. If you don't want to do that, that's okay too. Um, 
you draw the hair however it fits best for you. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to draw glasses. The rest can be up to you, how you accessorize your portrait. And so when we draw glasses, we're gonna do a sort of a curved, we're gonna start with a, a straight line that goes just under the eyebrow here. We're gonna make a rectangle that has curved edges. So I'm making a curve coming down and curving back around again. Now your glasses might be a slightly different shape, but this will just give you the basics. We're gonna curve down around the other side of the ear, curve again and connect. So it's almost a rectangle shape, but with curved corners. We're gonna copy that again over here, right under the eyebrow, a horizontal line, slightly bigger than the eye. Curve down, curve again to come across under the eye and connect. Now we'll use a horizontal line as a bridge across, and we'll make a parallel line to that too. All right, so now to make the, um, now to make the ear pieces, we're just gonna make a little rectangle on one side and a little rectangle over here, and then a horizontal, slightly diagonal line and a parallel matching one that just kind of connects right over the top of the ear. Do the same over here, a little line, another matching line that just kind of connects right behind the ear, right at the top. Now, if you have um, thicker frames than this, these are very thin, you can add a smaller version of this curved rectangle inside the one we drew before, and that will give you the outline of the frames. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, these are finished portraits. There are some things you can do to add a little bit of shadow or shading. Um, we're not gonna get into that this year, perhaps next year. Um, your art teachers will, will teach you a little bit more about that, but um, please feel free to reach out with any questions. I know that these are long videos and a lot of information, but I'm really proud of how your portraits turned out at the end of part one, and I cannot wait to see how they turn out here at the end of part two. So good luck. I'm here if you have any questions. I can't wait to see what you made.